John Sonchak is a PhD candidate working in the Distributed Systems Lab at the University of Pennsylvania. The topic of this webinar, um, this presentation, is looking at P4 as a tool that we can use to accelerate flow record monitoring. Flow record is basically a data format that summarizes a group of packets. A group of packets in the same TCP or UDP stream, usually. And so there are two basic parts to a flow record. First, the key of the flow record, which basically just describes which packets the record is summarizing. And second, the features of the flow record. And these are statistics and metadata that summarize those packets in that flow um, in a number of different dimensions. And this table shows some examples of uh, statistics that some applications may use. But um, in general, you know, there can be many different, uh, many different features um, depending on the needs of the application. So what do you actually do with flow records? Well, ultimately flow records are basically input to analysis applications. So there's some monitoring infrastructure on your network that produces these flow records based on the traffic and the links that you're monitoring. And it provides these flow records to analysis applications that kind of go through and analyze the flow records for things like security or traffic management or debugging. And generally, these analysis applications have two goals. Um, well, they can have many goals, but there are two uh, kind of high-level goals that are common. One is to provide information to network operators, so about the conditions of the network, uh, security threats, and so on. And the second goal is a lot of times uh, these analysis applications make decisions about reconfiguring the network. And so over the last few years, there's been a lot of examples of these types of applications um, with OpenFlow work. Um, and so those are examples of things for that do analysis to make decisions about reconfiguring the network. And so there are a lot of applications, analysis applications that use flow records. Um, there's some resources here if you're interested in, in finding more of them. Now, the reason why flow records are kind of widely used from the application perspective is because they're efficient. Um, they reduce the cost of your monitoring infrastructure. So if you look at the size and the rate of flow records that you have to analyze compared to something like packet headers, the volume and the rate of flow records is much lower because flow records are more compact than packet headers and also because new flow records arrive at the analysis application at the same rate as flows, which arrive orders of magnitude less frequently than packets. So our goal uh, in this line of work was to look at combining software flow record generation and the information richness and flexibility that it provides with P4 hardware acceleration that can reduce the overhead of kind of the overall monitoring infrastructure by basically reducing the amount of work that the CPU or the software has to do. The main idea um, is that we use P4 hardware to pre-process packets into what we call microflow records. And so the idea of a microflow record is that it basically summarizes a burst of traffic, a burst of packets rather within a specific flow. And so the P4 hardware generates these micro flow records and it sends them to um, software, which aggregates them much in the same way that it would aggregate regular packets into flow records. But the benefit is each micro flow record summarizes multiple packets already. There's some aggregation that has already happened. So the overall work of the software is going to be much less. So 
compared to um, just processing packets directly. And so we get increased efficiency because of the pre-processing that the P4 hardware is doing, but we also get information richness. Our second design, uh, the one that we ended up using, was uh, designed to kind of keep the CPU process out of the critical path of updating the table that maps keys to flow features. And so the idea is instead of using a forwarding table, we basically use a flat array in the P4 device um, that's set up using the registers that we use to store persistent state. And so it's a flat array that we just index based on the hash of the packet's key. So when a packet comes in to the P4 component, the first thing we do is compute the hash of the packet's key, it's IP5 tuple, and then we use this hash value to index into a position in our flat array. Now, we load the key that's currently stored at that position, which represents the key of the flow that that slot is tracking. If the keys match, the logic is simple. We just update whatever counters, whatever features we're storing uh, in that slot. The challenge comes in when we get uh, a collision. So when we get a packet that maps to a slot in the array, that's currently storing a different flow. What do we do? Collision resolution logic is basically too complex to implement in P4. Something like linear probing uh, or chain. So instead of attempting to do that, we use a very simple heuristic, which is to evict the older record up to the CPU. And so this, this evicted record, is a microflow. The CPU takes that microflow and inserts it into a regular hash table that ultimately aggregates the microflows into complete flow records. And so the benefit is um, the P4 component can do all of this logic uh, kind of at line rate without needing to invoke the CPU, and the CPU benefits because instead of operating on packets, it's operating on these microflows. And each microflow represents many, ideally many packets. So the overall workload is reduced. That's the high level idea. Again, uh, we use the P4 hardware to pre-group packets into these microflow records, which reduces the amount of work that CPU has to do. And we still retain information richness because we're not sampling and we can configure the P4 software and the regular software to track many different features. Using about one megabyte of memory on the SmartNIC forwarding engine, we can aggregate about 10 uh, packets into each microflow. And so that corresponds to a workload reduction of approximately a factor of 10 for the CPU. Uh, because basically, it's doing the same thing that it would do if it was processing each packet individually, right? It, it, gets, it gets a piece of data in and it updates some features, except now instead of operating on packets, it's operating on these microflow records, and there are about one-tenth as many microflow records. And so for context, what does this actually mean in terms of like real hardware? Um, if we look at the average rate, uh, packet rate and microflow rate on these traces, the average packet rate is about 500,000 packets per second. Now, if we're doing aggregation just using software running on the CPU of the commodity server, we can do about 600,000 packets per second. Now this is assuming that we're using a, um, a Redis key value store to map packets to flow records, and that's the main bottleneck. Um, 
but that's about enough capacity to handle one 10 gigabit link per core. So we do basically, if we use microflows instead, we do basically the same amount of work per microflow as we did per packet, just operating on those, but we have 10 times fewer microflows, right? The rate of arrival is one tenth. And so basically it scales linearly. Um, we, we can increase the capacity of our monitoring server to be able to handle about 100 gigabits of aggregate link per core. Basically, uh, for context, the takeaway is that we can do about 10 million packets per second on the smart NIP using all of the cores and our two optimizations, this uh, solid line here, which corresponds to roughly 40 to 80 gigabits of traffic with average sized packets.